Welcome to Point Church. My name is Grayson, and today we're continuing with week two of our sermon series called Heaven. If you're joining us for the first time, Point Church is a family of churches around the state that are all about pointing people to Jesus. We have campuses in Raleigh, Smithfield, West Forsyth, and a whole lot more. If you want to connect with us in person, you can go to pointchurch.com to find a campus near you. We would love to have you join us. And for those of you who have been watching for a while and have been blessed by these services, please consider giving to support us. These online services are supported by viewers like you. Go to pointchurch.com slash give and select the church online or TV option to begin giving. As we prepare to worship, put down your phone and erase that mental to-do list from your mind. Let the next 30 minutes be a sacred time between you and God where you can rest in his presence. Will you join us in worship? vacation? If you were fortunate enough to go on vacation this year, your friends and coworkers probably asked you how it was, and specifically they may have asked you two questions. Where did you go and what did you do there? After all, what you do in a large way determines how relaxing it was or how much of an escape that vacation was. I know some of you are itinerary people. I, on the other hand, am not. But some of you love lists and you love schedules. For a lot of people, they can't relax on vacation or anywhere for that matter until they know what's next on the list of things to do. 
Some people can't look forward to something until they know what they will be doing because it's hard to be excited about the unknown. I think that's why one of the most frequent questions people ask about heaven is, what are we going to be doing when we get there? One college professor asked his students about heaven and was not prepared for their responses. They were like, heaven? It sounds long. I get bored really, really fast. If church people are there, it can't be that much fun. I just hope nobody messes it up like they did in the Garden of Eden. But above all, the fear of boredom trumped all other objections. And if we're honest, we might have to admit that we also wonder how we will be happy for hundreds of years in the same place, much less for eternity. One student said, if there's no basketball in heaven, I'm not going. Uh, or another person said, I love the beach, but there aren't any oceans up there. I'm like, are there? C can I take my horses with me? One girl asked. I, I won't be happy without them. Now, some of these objections reflect the American culture where life is just a bit too nice. We are, we are like little kids, too absorbed with our little toys to be interested in higher things. I mean, who needs heaven when you have football? Why be resurrected when you can have a heart transplant? Who wants harps when you have drums here? Why walk on streets of gold when you can fly on the freeway on leather interior? Who needs the Bible when you have Google? See, this is our second week journeying through what heaven will be like. And while it might be okay, if not accurate, to think of pets or sports or technology about those things being in heaven, all of those attempts to anticipate what we will do in heaven are just feeble attempts to project our own favorite things onto the next world. Daniel Shantz writes, God is not so impoverished that he has to pack a suitcase of our favorite toys so we won't get bored on the long journey through eternity. What will we do in heaven? It may, change, it may challenge our understanding, our preconceived ideas of pleasure or justice, but the scripture is truth and God's thoughts and ways are higher than our ways. And what does the Bible say we'll do in heaven? Well, the first thing is this. It says we will be rewarded. This topic is debated some by Christian scholars, but I think the clear teaching of scripture is that there will be degrees of reward for Christians who go to heaven. Twice Jesus says, great will be your reward in the kingdom. He speaks of storing up treasure for ourselves in heaven. Paul writes in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 19, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Jeremiah 17, 10 says, I am the Lord. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. Jesus says that again in Revelation 2, 23, I will repay each of you according to your deeds. For the Christian, the judgment day will include an award ceremony of sorts. We've been saved by grace and not by our works, but even so, our good deeds will not be forgotten. Here, here are some of the categories that we'll, we'll be rewarded for our persecutions. It says in Matthew 5, Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way that they persecuted the prophets who were before you. We'll be rewarded for our sacrifices. It says, And everyone who has given up houses and brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or property for my sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life in Matthew 19. Small courtesies. Matthew, Mark 9 says, I tell you the truth, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. We'll be rewarded for our attention to the neglected. Luke 14 says, but when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you'll be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you'll be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Daniel Shantz writes, the big difference between our earthly systems of reward and the heavenly system is that people who are nobody will be somebody up there. The rewards will go to the John Doe's and the Jill Smith's. Down here, our works are often forgotten. Your children may neglect you. Your husband isn't even aware of all you do for him. Your wife doesn't appreciate the sacrifices you have made to be faithful to her. Your boss takes advantage of your commitment. But God will not forget a single sacrifice. It's all in his book, and he has a great memory. Here's the second thing. We will have fulfilling work to do. In Luke 19, it says that when the master returned, he rewarded the good and faithful servants by putting them in charge of cities. If that is a picture of heaven, then when Christ returns, those who have been faithful to him may be rewarded with responsibilities in heaven too. The Bible points out in Revelation 22, 3, that we will serve God in heaven. It says in verse 3, no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. Service or work in heaven will not be frustrating or fruitless. Instead, it will, be, instead it will involve lasting accomplishment unhindered by decay or fatigue, enhanced by unlimited resources. We aren't told exactly what we will be doing, but we can know we'll love our work. Meaningful administration. For those who like to manage things, the Bible says the servants of God will reign forever and ever. 
fulfilling service. As servants of God for eternity, we will have some awesome jobs to do. All the pleasure and fulfillment of a job with none of the stresses or difficulties. It will be like the job we were meant to have. Glorifying art, art and music on earth have served both to praise God and to curse him. Satan has certainly distorted and ruined good music and painting and dancing and made it sinful, but in heaven it will be used to praise God. And people will compose new works of art to praise the Lord with, it says in Revelation 14.3. The third thing is that we will enjoy loving relationships. When God created Adam and put him in the Garden of Eden, he declared it is not good for man to be alone in Genesis 2.18. God created humans to be social beings. God knew Adam needed human company despite his intimate face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord. So it's reasonable to expect that part of the pleasures of heaven will be visiting with old friends and making new ones. I've heard non-Christians joke that they would rather go to hell when they die because that's where all their friends are and it'll be one big party. But the Bible says just the opposite. Hell will be a place of complete and utter loneliness and misery. But parting in heaven sounds a bit strange to some people. In this life, parties and debauchery go hand in hand. Because on earth, many people don't know how to have a good time without drunkenness, cursing, or being inappropriately sexual. But in heaven, we will rejoice and celebrate in the most exciting way possible with people we love. There will be, eternal, there will be an eternal party that celebrates Christ as being worthy. It will be a wedding celebration, it says in Revelation 19. And we won't have time constraints. We won't feel awkward or worry about saying something stupid. We won't be hindered by jealousy or hurt feelings. Next week, we'll wrap up our series talking about who will be there in heaven. But we know that whoever is there in heaven, we will discover the real joy of relationship. In Revelation 21, 3, it says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. The, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. It won't just be other people in heaven, but it will be God too. I don't think we will ever get over the nearness of God. Now we see things imperfectly now as in a cloudy mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely just as God knows me completely. That feeling of comfort and assurance will never leave us for all of eternity. The fourth thing is that we will participate in awesome worship. Marcy Kennedy writes, despite a sincere faith and love for God, some Christians think that they would rather stay on earth than go to heaven because they equate heaven with the less than inspiring church services that they've attended. Before we can begin to look forward to spending eternity in worship, we need to glimpse what it really means to worship God. In Revelation chapter 19, verses 6 and 7, it describes great multitudes of people and creatures worshiping together. It says, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. If you've ever experienced the early days of being in love, you may have had a taste of what worship in heaven will be like. When you first fall in love with someone, you can't spend enough time in their presence. Can't get enough of being close to them. Your eyes stray to her when you're in the same room but separated. You know you should be thinking about your work, but your mind wanders the thoughts of him and you mull over her many virtues and her awe that someone so wonderful loves you back. You find your greatest joy in inventing ways to show your new love how you feel. Magnify that experience by a thousand. And you may just get a glimpse of what it'll be like in the presence of God worshiping him. And the experience will never fade the way new love often does. We humble ourselves and we declare the praises of God. This is how we choose to live this life. And when we get to heaven, worship will continue for eternity. And those of us who have humbled ourselves in this way, Jesus picks us up and rewards us and loves us. But for the non-Christian on the day of judgment, they will be humbled. What will we do in heaven? I'm certain heaven won't be boring. Sitting around on a cloud, strumming a harp. I think it'll be more like this. The skilled laborer who likes to build things, having all the time and materials he could ever need to construct great masterpieces. The woman who likes to study and learn, having time to consume every book she ever wanted to read. The fellow who enjoys athletics, being able to run and jump without getting tired. The adventurer who likes to travel, having unlimited opportunities to explore the vast array of God's new heaven and new earth. The musician, having unlimited opportunities to compose and perform beautiful songs of praise to God. The visionary whose dreams and aspirations have been frustrated here on earth, finding complete fulfillment at last. The tormented soul who has been misunderstood or belittled by others, finding himself enveloped in God's abiding love. The woman who was blind on earth, now with wide open eyes, beholding the glorious colors and splendors of heaven. The one who was paralyzed or lame, now leaping with joy and never growing weary. The seeker who asked hard questions, finally experiencing a satisfied mind. Those who have been outcast on this earth, now enjoying 
untainted fellowship with others. Little children whose lives were prematurely snuffed out, sharing a heavenly reunion with their joyful parents in a place where every tear is wiped away. Dear old saints who served the Lord through good times and bad, enjoying the fruit of their labor, all of us who have been saved by grace will be there together, worshiping the all-wise Lord who deserves all praise. Revelation 21 verse 4 says, In heaven he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. As Christians, we should always remember that this world is not our home. We look forward to a place where there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. That is our home. That is heaven. Heaven truly is indescribable. And while we can know from the Bible a few things of what we'll do and experience there, we would be foolish to think that we could even speculate how amazing and awesome it will be. But I know it's going to be a wonderful place. Don't you want to go there with me? Here's my next step for you today. I want you to begin living your life as preparation for an eternal celebration. So let's go through those four points again. What does that look like to get ready now for the life that you will live eternally? We talked about how one day you will experience the rewards in the future for the life that you live now in the present. So if that is the case, what if you each day said, I want to live a life and I want to make decisions and I want to act in ways that will one day be rewarded by my Father in heaven? How much would that change the way that we think, the way that we act, and the things that we put on our calendar to say, I want to fill my life with things that will one day be rewarded? Fulfilling work? Look, Work is very often just the drab of our existence and it, it drains us and it's not fulfilling. But very often that can be changed when you realize I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing this for a boss. I'm not doing this even to prepare for, to provide for my family. Ultimately, I do what I do to worship God. I give my best for him because that's what you'll do one day forever. Let's begin that mindset now. When we think about our relationships. May, may, may we think about the fact that we were created for relationships in this week. Would you treat people that you have relationships with the way that one day you will treat people eternally. Let's not wait to treat people right then. Let's begin treating people the way that heaven desires now. And lastly, worship. Listen, there's different styles and preferences of worship, and some people like it more than others. But listen, here's what I know. To truly tap into what worship is, is something that everyone would truly enjoy because it's what you were created to do. So take a step this week. Maybe before you engage with church online next week, or maybe before you join back in person at one of our Point Church campuses, take some time and re-watch this video and, and replay these worship songs and spend time just worshiping God even by yourself. Because listen, if we don't enjoy worshiping Him now, what makes us think we'll enjoy doing that for eternity? So let's get in the business of enjoying the Lord and worship. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for Lord, the truth of your word, Lord, that we have so much to look forward to and so much to be excited about. And God, I pray that we would not see this life as being better than the next. God, I pray that we would trust you and believe, Lord, that this life, as good as this life is that you've blessed us with, Lord, that we have so much to look forward to. And God, I pray that we would not get there and be shocked one day because we've actually been living the heavenly life now in the present, each day that you've given us. In your name, amen. How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets To look upon the one who bled to save me And walk with him for all eternity There will be a day when all will bow before Him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with Him who died and rose again. Worthy, worthy. Prayed in desperation The songs of faith We sang through doubt and fear And in the end We'll see that it was worth it When He returns 
to wipe away our tears. And there will be a day when it all about before Him. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with Him who died and rose again. Oh, And beside the heroes of the faith And with one voice a thousand generations Sing worthy is the Lamb that was slain Yes, on that day we join the resurrection And stand beside the heroes of the faith and with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the land that was slain forever he shall reign so let it be today that we of heaven with angels and the saints we raise a mighty roar glory to our God who gave us life beyond the grave holy holy is the Lord yes let it be today we shout the hymn of heaven We've come to the point in our service each week where we take communion, where we take the bread which represents Jesus' body that was broken for us on the cross, and we take the juice which represents his blood shed for us when I think about what we will do forever. And so go ahead and grab whatever communion elements that you have wherever you sit and wherever you are. May we just take a moment to realize that remembering this right now is something that we will always do. We thank you, Jesus, for your broken body for us. And we thank you so much that because of your blood shed for us, one day we will be able to spend eternity with you, forever grateful for your sacrifice. See the light breaking through all the lies with the truth. Hear the sound of the wind let the roar of heaven begin can't stay silent can't stay still when you show up in power glory revealed oh i can't stay silent can't stay still when i feel the fire feel the ground shake heaven in Okay. 
own hearts on the mend all the pressure must end all the shame and the fear run away when you are here I can stay silent can stay still when you show up in power glory revealed oh I can't, can't stay, stay silent Starts to race and I can't contain the feeling of joy being in your presence. I can't help dance, can't help but sing. I don't really care what anyone thinks. Hearts are to race and I can't contain the feeling of joy being in your presence. Our heartbeat is to point people to Jesus, and we believe one of the best ways to do that is by planning new churches. On January 16th, we will celebrate the grand opening of both our Garner and our Smithfield campuses. I personally have the privilege of becoming the campus pastor at our new Garner campus and would love to see you there. You see, when you give to Point Church, you help make planning new churches like ours possible. Your giving also goes to support online services just like this. To give, just go to pointchurch.com give and select your campus or the church online and TV option. Thank you for giving sacrificially to support what God is doing here and beyond. And if you're watching in North Carolina, we would be overjoyed to have you join us in person at any one of our campuses. Go to pointchurch.com to find a campus near you. You will not regret it. Now, God bless you. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you again next week.